Hello, welcome back to another episode of Nobody's Doing It Right, the podcast for those who are uncertain. My name is Kat. I am one of these perpetually uncertain people who is now helping other people who are uncertain sort through their thoughts, gain more clarity, self-awareness, and find alignment, basically. Um, If you are interested in working with me to do this, if you feel like you struggle with just understanding yourself a little bit more, feel free to book a one-to-one call with me. I also am now offering a guided journaling workshop for anybody who feels like they struggle with journaling in a way that's effective and helps them get clarity on their thoughts. Um, I have a lot of people who ask me how I journal and how it works. And obviously every form of journaling is valid. You can journal however you want to, but the way I do it is kind of like investigative journaling. I want to get answers. I want to understand myself. And that's what I will be teaching in this guided journaling workshop. So if you're interested in joining me on Wednesday, March 29th, feel free to visit my website and buy your ticket. And the link will be sent 24 hours before. So let's get right into this topic. You can be compassionate without being complacent. So what I mean by that is, as somebody who is very empathetic, I try to be very empathetic, I try to be very understanding of people because I want people to also be understanding of me, right? One of my core wounds is that I'm not being seen or I haven't been seen for a lot of my life. So I want to extend that to other people. So I try my best to see and understand others and validate them, right? That's like what I try my hardest to do. However, you can get to a point where you are so compassionate, so understanding, to the point where it becomes complacent, where you are, you're giving too much, basically, and you are just trying to be agreeable and to make this person feel okay no matter what, especially no matter if you're not feeling great. And there is a fine line there, and you don't have to become obliging and agreeable all the time just to show compassion. Because ultimately, compassion, true compassion, has to be shown to both the person that you want to show it to and to yourself. If you're not showing it to yourself first, if you don't even know what it feels like to be truly compassionate to yourself and understanding of yourself, understanding of your boundaries, your limitations, your needs, you won't be able to show it effectively to somebody else. You will show it in a way that turns into complacency where you then empty your cup to fill that person's cup up and then become resentful because they're not doing the same for you, especially if it's somebody who's not willing to do that or can't do it for whatever reason, right? The reason's the reason's irrelevant. And I know a lot of people like to think, well, if they wanted to, they would. Some people just can't. Some people don't know how to do it. And to hope and rely on them to give you back what you've been giving them because you haven't been filling your own cup up, you've been emptying it out for them so that you now expect them to fill it up, will only leave you feeling resentful and upset and empty. And that's not what we wanna do. We want to get to a place where we can both show compassion and understanding and also be mindful of ourselves and our needs. And it can be tricky because if you were raised as a people pleaser, somebody who has to always consider other people no matter what, and maybe you walk on eggshells around people to not upset them, maybe you're a fearful avoidant like me, you have been conditioned to think that you have to always make another person feel comfortable so that you don't feel uncomfortable in their discomfort, right? I'm gonna repeat that again. You have been conditioned to think you have to always make someone feel comfortable so that you don't feel uncomfortable in their discomfort, right? You see how sticky it is and how you can get kind of like lost in this? But ultimately, there is a way to do both. And the best way to do this, as I've learned from my own experience, is to first ask yourself what it feels like to show compassion to you. How would you want compassion to be shown to you? Because at the end of the day, I don't think anybody who is trying to, I guess, approach relationships of any kind from a more secure, healthy place wants somebody who's willing to empty themselves out for you because you're recognizing that that's not good for them and also can make you feel, oh, I now feel obligated to have to give more to them back, right? It creates this dynamic that doesn't feel great. So if you've ever been on the receiving end of somebody who's just giving so much and being complacent and just overdoing it in a sense, even though they mean well, of course, there is an energy underlying that that can feel kind of icky. It can feel it can feel like you are being forced to now act a certain way in response to them. And that doesn't feel good. So first, ask yourself, how would you want compassion shown to you? How would you expect somebody to show up for you? 
and also show up for themselves, right? It can help to look at things objectively, create like a character description of somebody that would be com compassionate without being, you know, too complacent to another person. Look at that objectively and say, what would somebody like that do? How would they show up? And of course, you have to start showing up like that. And that means being willing to face the discomfort of making somebody else not your main priority and making them only able to access certain parts of you because not everybody should or deserves access to all of you. You deserve access to all of you, obviously, and some people can get access to you as well, of course, but not everybody needs all of it. And that can sometimes mean that some people who are, you know, who enjoy having access to somebody completely, who enjoy somebody who's willing to overgive, uh, will be upset about that. And you have to be willing to be okay with that and actually enjoy that in a sense. Like the fact that some people who are not right for you, who are not meant for you, will be upset at you showing up for yourself and also giving as much as you can and are willing to give to somebody while still maintaining your boundaries and your comfort level, right? The right people for you, the ones that are most aligned with you, will reciprocate appropriately. There will be a nice balance, a nice flow between you. And that sometimes means that you do have to recondition the people around you to understand that this is how you're showing up now. It doesn't mean you have to kind of dump everyone in your life who's been comfortable with how you're showing up. No, you can retrain people. And that works even in familial relationships. You know, changing the way you show up can sometimes change the way other people respond to you and then how they show up. You can shift other people's energies and their lives in a sense just by you shifting yourself. And it can be that simple, but it takes, you know, it's not easy. It's simple, but it's not easy. It takes work. It takes the willingness to be in discomfort for a little bit and recognize that ultimately it'll feel better to show up for yourself and be there for yourself and then showing up for somebody else and being able to give what you can give to them in, from an authentic place, not from a desperate place, a needing to please them all the time place, you know, wanting them to be okay no matter what and feeling like they're not able to feel okay on their own without you. Like that's also kind of infantilizing too, right? That's not really authentic or genuinely kind in a sense, right? So it's important to see it from that perspective as well. It doesn't mean you have to completely get rid of your compassion towards another person. It's important to have compassion, but the best way to understand how to give it is to understand how you would want to receive it from like a healthy, secure place. Because of course, if you're struggling with anxious attachment, which obviously no shame in that, I have struggled with that myself, Sometimes it feels really good to get more, to get a lot, because it's filling a void, right? It's filling that void that you're not giving to yourself, that kind of love, validation, understanding that you're not showing yourself. So ultimately, it, it starts with us, you know, working from the inside out. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this offered a bit of insight. I will be posting a few more podcast episodes this week. I'm trying to test out if, you know, it's enjoyable for me to post more, if people like that I'm posting more. So I'll be popping in and out with more topics that I want to discuss. If you feel like there's something you want to hear me talk about, feel free to email me. Um, all the information will be in the show notes below. And again, if you want to work with me one-to-one, -one, feel free to book a one-to-one -one call. I offer audio recordings as well. If you don't want to do, you know, face-to-face -face communication, I also have email guidance. And again, I have that guided journaling workshop. So if you want to join that, if you want to have a supportive community where you can practice your journaling, be more consistent with it, be more accountable um, and get clearer on your thoughts and how you feel about yourself without having to share anything in the call. You don't have to share anything with anybody else. This is just, you know, a supportive environment. Uh, feel free to find all the information in the show notes below on my website and book your ticket. So thank you again for listening and I'll be back again soon with another episode.